Yo, yo, yo. Hyper analysis episode two. These are kind of fun to make for me, guys, because it's something different, you know? So this is like a very interesting game for me, and I hope it's kind of like an interesting game for you guys too, because I get just a lot. When to build hole breaker, how to play with hole breaker, like what situations it's good in, can you 1v1, can you do it in this game, can you do it in that game, yabba dabba do. I think this is like a perfect game to show off how split working as a jungler can work with hole breaker, but it also kind of shows off that hole breaker is for me, for my UD playstyle, not really an item that I exclusively build to deal damage to turrets and um, structures, right? I build this item because of the stats it gives me, and my playstyle is usually... I, I barely just, like in mid-game, walk around with my team and um, try to do stuff with my team. Usually I'm like solo in the jungle, yabba dabba doing, doing my own thing, side then killing somebody, so perfect for my playstyle. Anyways, Let's start off by looking at the matchups. Camille versus Renekton. Let me just start off by saying this. I have probably the dream team for AD UD. We have an AP Mage mid laner. We have an actual hook utility supporter. We have a hard sca scaling ADC. And we have three lanes that we can unironically gank. Camille with the hook shot into ult. We have Talia with the stun, whatever, stone throwing technology. We have a bot lane with the lantern into glacial e hook whatever you guys know fresh is a broken fucking champion so yeah three good lanes to gank what i'm thinking here is okay enemy team utility utility kind of cocky champion utility the only real manly champion they have so why am i talking about utility right now if you play ad udia one of the most inf important concepts to understand is that AD Udir sucks if you can't auto attack. And you may say, okay, that's pretty much every Udir, right? That's not very true. Not every Udir cares about auto attacking, guys. If you're, if you're Phoenix Udir, 60-70% of your damage on your R is in the circle, so the auto attack is just like the cherry on top. If you press W as phoenix udi and you stack hp and ap your shield is gonna be fed so you don't have to auto attack to get tankiness out of iron mantle your health regen is gonna be fed when you press w2 so you don't have to actually rely on auto attacking now if you play ad udi what you look at when you look at iron mantle is the lifesteal and the double lifesteal on super stance lifesteal basically scales up with your auto attack damage so it's perfect for ad udi because you're gonna have more auto attack damage you're gonna have less hp presumably and less ap so long story short you're looking for the lives you need to auto attack on ad udi you need to auto attack to apply all your damage. You need to auto attack to get use of your maxed E. In case you don't know, the per unit cooldown on the stun goes down if you put points into E, so you can potentially get off more stuns. Everything you do, Zayde UD is auto attacking. So champions that can delay your damage, slow you down, exhaust you, fucking stun you, go invulnerable. Basically, any champion that just tries to avoid your auto attacking is strong against AD Udia, so that is why I'm talking about utility. This is like a game where you should look to split push even if you are ahead because you're just gonna be weaker in team fights. Anyways, let's play the play the fucking uh, replay. So pretty standard here I would say. Can we leave base? Thank you. Pretty standard here. Ivan is just looking for vision, so he knows where to steal my camps. I mean, there's two types of Ivan players, in my opinion. There's the Ivan player who invades and steals one of your camps, and then there's the Ivan player who's actually fight-fed and full clears, because Ivan has the fastest full clear in the game. Out of all junglers, he has the fastest level 4. So, this guy obviously, like, if you see an Ivan walk into your jungle like that, 
99% sure that he's gonna try to yoink one of your buffs, which is okay, you can play for that. You don't have to hit level 4 really early on if you can't. There's just some games where you get bullied like that, as you just can't lose your game for that. Here we check if they're in the rush, they aren't. Standard clear. Today we didn't forget our wolf in the base. Always go blue pet. Blue pet is the best. Get the fucking speed ups. Um, reason why I path topset here is like an, 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 again a very interesting talking point. Usually the enemy top laner is the laner that you are gonna verse on side lane, right? Most likely this game what's gonna happen is I'm gonna verse Renekton on side lane somewhere because he's gonna be the best champion to fight Udi. I mean, Yon is a good contender too, but Yon is a little bit better in te at uh, team fighting than Renekton, so he's probably... It's just probability here. It has nothing to do with what's actually gonna happen, but it's most likely I'm gonna verse Renekton. So if you path into top side, if you know you're gonna split push already, which in this game I'm pretty sure I will, then it's kind of nice to, like, make the opponent that's gonna split push you weaker so that's why i have top set here but then if you gank bot then here you're completely valid but then it's an amazing lane to gank here especially if you don't look to split push you should definitely go bot lane. here i've unyoinked my blue buffs whatever kind of had a feeling he's gonna do that anyways when acting comes to bully me some more it's fine hey can mess with the bully but with the Pulls up to school with never mind. So right now we're getting bullied a little bit by top and jungle. It's fine. It doesn't really matter. Right now I'm thinking, okay, well look man. First of all, one thing I wanna say here before I go into my next point is I bought these two components. I didn't buy pickaxe because I didn't have gold for pickaxes, as you can see here. I didn't have fucking gold for it right now. So basically what I want you guys to understand is Pickaxe is a first bag only purchase. If you can't get it first bag, don't buy it second bag. Because if you can't get it first bag, something went wrong in your early game, so you can't buy it, right? You didn't get a full clearance, you got bullied, uh, whatever. You just don't have to go. Don't buy it, don't bother. Just go for your Trinity Post, Divine, whatever Mickey Mouse items you guys are building. Whatever, right? Um... Here I'm like thinking, okay, pretty close to level 4, if I get a crab, then probably I'm level 4, crab minion, I mean you can see the XP bar like here, it's the little purple thing underneath over here, anyhow, um, kind of actually want to back up here and tell you guys what I'm thinking here, so I know that Ivan is probably messing around my top lane right now, and I see his blue buff is up, so he's not here at all. But I see Brom move for the blue buff, so I'm instantly thinking, okay, they're setting up a counter play here, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm like thinking, right? That's like important stuff to consider if you play a fighter jungler or like a champion like Udir, where you have to like grab onto every little lead you, lead you can get. I see Yon mid lane. It's an Ivan, it's a Braum and an Ezreal we would realistically fight, right? These are the three champions that are going to be here, even if it's just me and Thrash, let's say, right? Are these champions with a tear and a longsword and two supporters really even going to be able to fuck with me? If I'm here with Thrash and I have my Lethal Tempo stacked and I get Super Sense Rotation after Super Sense Rotation? Probably not, not Bro. So, here Braum flashes, we get to kill on Braum. I'm like, okay. Brom is dead, now it's just two people. Now it's a Mickey Mouse ADC and a Mickey Mouse supporter. Here, I mean, realistically, I should have tried to go for the blue buff, but he smites it anyways. Ivan just does a huge oopsie here. I mean, I don't know what this guy is smoking, he's just dead. Right, and I'm just checking for his wolves here, so... Yeah, very interesting turn of events, basically. Here I'm just thinking, okay, you know what, second clear time, this is the perfect opportunity to just get consistent XP and gold income. So that's what I'm doing. Just looking for more, oops, sorry guys, looking for more gold to get from the map. There's a fight mid then, I'm seeing it, I'm thinking this fight is good, so I'm walking up, unfortunately. I wouldn't have done anything here, unless my fresh is fucking Jesus, and he hopes there. Then Renekton, actually let's back up a little bit and see actually how the target this Renekton is. Guys, if this guy can hit Master or Diamond or whatever he is, then you guys can do it. There's three people here, 
Freshes Glacial and he flashes to trade a kill on fucking Talia instead of just walking back top and catching this wave. Rip to this guy. Probably mental booming right now. Brom is walking a lot in river. That's also something you guys have to pay attention to. Like, we see that Brom is walking a lot in river. That means that probably bot side river is fucking cream pipe with fucking wards, man. There's probably wards fucking everywhere. So that means we have to play a little bit cautious if we are bot side. Play top lane. Also something important to note here. Sorry guys, I'm not the best with replays, by the way. Uh, this guy bullies me still. Look how this fight plays. So, before... I'm even anywhere close to the situation. My Camille is ultless, flashless, half HP, getting fucking ready to receive the fucking tree deck and the fucking crocodile deck. So here I'm just like thinking, okay, uh, what are you gonna walk there then? I'm just gonna take what's mine, bro. I'm just gonna take my crab. That's fine. Ivan tries to pull up here, I don't even know why. I boomed the smite, tell me something new. So this is also interesting. Here, I know, I see his chickens are up. Check to CS, 28, that's a full clear. He didn't take a camp for a while. He's either gonna walk here into this bush, check if I'm doing this, which at this point I could try to 1v1 him and get the camp, so that would be an opportunity. Or I could just walk here and take this and leave. It really depends on what you wanna do. I'm always somebody who plays way too fucking greedy. That's why I'm retarded and that's why I'm fucking Heart stuck like mid master. Um, you can just take the camp here and leave, but like for me, I, I was standing in the bush hoping he comes here, but he doesn't, so I'm gonna take the camp. Some Uga Booga fight in the mid lane, pinging her back because I'm like farming. And um, here I'm just backing, I'm just like checking, like looking for an opportunity. I see that mid lane fight is breaking out, I'm like, okay. If I'm here, she doesn't die, so that's what I do, basically. Just stand here, help her push it, leave, right? She's gonna get her Q up and farm this. Whatever happens now to Talia, if she would just die to Ivan, I don't give a shit, honestly. I basically just set her up to go back. Ivan is just getting fisted by the stones, so it is what it is. Camilla's being chilling, I see the play, I'm like, uh, I, wanna, I wanna take one blue buff, though. Right, so... Farming my blue buff here, checking how the play is top side. I would have ganked her here, but unfortunately Renekton moved in the right moment. I feel like a lot of laners don't even understand how broken something like this is. Just moving into the river, checking for the jungler. Because if I'm spotted, especially as Udia with the telegraphed gank, I'm just gonna go back, man. I'm not gonna stay, stay here and try to gank again. Full clear angle. Ivan is probably looking for dragon here. I know that Brom walked a lot through the river, so I'm kind of like over. In my head, the dragon is already gone because I feel like this is perma ward and they have perma prior, so I'm kind of like, yeah, whatever, you know? Right now, we have for components check. Maybe I should just leave this tab open. We have all Trinity Force components, so we are relatively strong here. Not OP, but in a skirmish, we are going to be pretty strong. Brom is still in the river. Again, guys, read the map. This is reading the map, okay? We see Brom is fucking dicking around in the river 24-7. This river is filled with fucking wards. It's fucking cream pipe with wards. So here, I'm just checking. Oh, dragon is water. Can't do Drake. I'm thinking blue buff is up. This is a risky fucking play, by the way. But again, it's Brom, Ivan with Swifties, and... Ezra. So right now I'm thinking even if I'm in a 1v3, I'm probably gonna get a camp, die and kill one of them. Or I mean kill one of them and then die. Not playing Carthus, so. Ivan is just chilling on his fucking Shelly, favorite objective. Shelly is cheating on me. This is what it is. Nobody moves here. I think they knew that I'm here, but I don't care. I'm just looking for a play. They think that I'm here, but they don't move back or position themselves in a way where they don't get ganked. I'm on the plant here, chilling patiently. I'm like, okay, we have to go. The wave is slowly pushing into them. My vein is all attacking. So here, also very interesting, guys. Use your E-tools, man, for ganking. Like, this is not a ga I mean, this is a gank where we could have killed, of course. I mean, I almost got myself killed. But use your E-tools for ganking. 
It's so fucking OP for ganking on Udi, honestly. Use your fucking e tools. It's not worth to like play for optimal damage here. Just play for a stun. You're three people. You have enough damage to kill. Trust me, it's season 13, not season 8. Surely have enough damage to kill them. You just need to actually get in a position where you can kill them. So playing for e there for the stun. So far, pretty like normal ass gameplay, I would say. Normal ass Udi gameplay. This is also an interesting fight. I'm just not sure here if I can just walk in or if I'm gonna get auto queued by Ezreal and just die. So, waiting for Vayne to pull up and then I just walk in with W2 and you see, I just got hit, by the way, by Brom's ult and I almost broke my shield. So that means if Ezreal auto queued me there, I would have just instantly died. So it's good that I played that as well. Dragon up again, guys. I know everything is just the whole river is just disgusting right now. I'm not even playing for dragon. Like, usually, you know me, I'm fucking flipping every drake, but this is not a flip. This is a fucking suicide mission if I go for dragon here. So, right now, they're doing the drake. Oh well, big whoopsie, man. It is what it is. Like, drake was already gone in my head five minutes ago. Just had a delayed announcement from the announcer, I guess. So Yon is doing some fiddling here at Flash. Ivan is here to counter the gang. It's a bit unlucky. It is what it is. Continuing to farm, man. The only time you will see me break farm is if I have to hold a lane, get a crab, get an objective or invade. Right? Here I'm thinking, okay, I can maybe... I thought that maybe I can stop him from taking a plate, but... Here, skipping my blue buff for crab. Again, it doesn't really matter. As long as you do your basic camps and they respawn, you're gonna be good on the CS. Like, you don't have to overcomplicate everything. E2 tier for the stun, for the assist, whatever. Here, okay, two things you can do. We know that Ivan is gonna be fucking around in my bot side, right? Naturally, because, like, we had vision on him, we saw him walk here, whatever. Reading the map. Here, you can either take his top side camps or push this turret with Camille but in my head I don't know if he has TP turns out he does um, in my head it's more worth to take his camps here uh, in my head it's more worth to take his camps and don't put myself behind C in CS right so in my head he takes my red buff right now he doesn't so I take his top side it's like a double bonus that I did and Camille gets the plates anyways man like Sure, we could have maybe gotten the full turret, but you know, at the end of at the end in, at the end of the day, you kind of want to be ahead yourself as well, especially if you look for split push. So here, I don't know what Renekton is smoking. We just kill him. Pretty normal. There's like not much to say. Renekton is just one of these players that don't respect anything. So he's just dying over and over and over again. Doing a quick W two here. Ivan is just sticking around on the map the entire game. I don't even know what to say about this gameplay. They try to skirmish here in, in jungle. I can actually guarantee you, even if Ivan and Braum would both walk here and try to contest this, I would have killed both of them or killed one and the other one flashed out. It's two utility champions against Uli with Trinity Force and the Yeezys. Like, got the magical Yeezys. There's like no way that they would win this. So we're just chilling here. Promise welding. It is what it is. Here, nice lantern play. Get the stun on him. Kill him fast. Okay, this fight might be a little bit interesting. Um, so I stun him. I'm thinking if I want to kill too, but he gets the he gets the Ivan shield, so I just want to speed up the dying. And I focus Ezreal here because I know Vayne is gonna die either way. The longer Ezreal lives, the more damage I'm gonna take. Um, he's just gonna die here, basically. I mean, there's not much to say. He just gets smoked by the brisket. This is not the interesting part yet, guys. We don't have pool breaker yet, okay? So here, very important. I know, pretty much know in my head that Yon is gonna be bot set because he's not catching the mid lane wave, right? Braum respawned, didn't really think about that, but doesn't really matter. So in my head here, I'm just, like, cooking the turret. Now, I'm ready to die. This would be a good death here. Ready to die for the turret. This sets me up to split push even harder later on. So I'm like, okay. I'm gonna get my whole break after this bag. I'm gonna die here. Kind of interesting what happens here, I, I guess. Um, so there's a big oopsie they make here. I'm stacking up for my super stance. Like, I'm just thinking I'm probably not gonna ditch, but I like basically want to try to waste their time a little bit. I have super stance here. 
look what they do. They layer their CC. They just both use it at the same time. So one E2 and I'm just gone. I blocked three different CC spells with one super stance because they use them all at once. This is not me playing well, that is them playing bad. We take it though. Go back here, this is whole breaker and fucking Tabis. Ooh, looking fucking juicy. Here I'm thinking, okay, I got what I need to split push. I got the first tower bot lane. There's nobody in the game that can only on me. Take let me take Shelly. Let me take Shelly. Let me set myself up for a big split push here because I have whole breaker. I'm not really looking to team fight against him. I could probably because they are weak enough, but the smart play here is just to um, play for the split push. Farming, they got the second Drake, so their team fight is looking stronger and stronger and stronger. But the, you can see the game is ending very soon, and there's a big reason why that happens here. Uh, I don't know if Yon is backing in this push. I'm just like looking for Yon. Talia's gonna get smoked here. Tell me something new. It's actually really good that you got smoked here. Because that means I'm gonna get the lane to split push for at least 30 seconds. 40 seconds left time. Holy shit. So killing Yon here. So what do we have to keep in mind here? Yon is that I have Shelly. So I have 30 seconds to split push, right? Yon is that. They have... Renekton, who's top lane, who's the only other champion who could potentially 1v1 one 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 me, but in reality he couldn't. He would just die if he comes bot lane. And the rest of the team is probably not even gonna try. If Ezra's here, he just dies, right? So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go so fucking ham here. I don't even fucking care. I'm gonna go so ham. I'm gonna guarantee that I die here, basically. That's how ham I go. I push. Got the second tower bot lane. Got the third tower bot lane. Here my Trinity Force is still stacked. I'm thinking if Yon fucks this fight up, I'm gonna take at least one inhib uh, one Nexus tower. They fight topside by the way for some reason. Yon just gets smoked. He should have just stood underneath these two turrets. Yon is dead here. Yeah, I have enough mana to actually like take both of the turrets now because like their team just fucking griefed with the play. This is the strength of Trinity Force and uh Holebreaker. We're just taking both of the turrets. And at this point. Like Trick to G likes to say, the game is in my hands. The game is basically already fucking over. There's like not much for them to do anymore. This is the the fucking replay could end right here. The, they lost. Okay, that's done. They can't two v one me. Nash is about to spawn. We would literally just cook the entire base, no matter what. We either get Nash and cook the base, or I cook the base and they get Nash. One of the two. It doesn't really matter. Here I'm just prepping for Nash. Uh, I don't know, Ivan just entered, I guess. We get the Nash, game is over, guys. It's not much else to say. We just completely broke their base open. So here I'm just fucking chilling. I know that the game is over. Just taking some camps, more gold for the end screen. Red buff, blue buff, I'm like, okay, I mean, let's see what happens if I just walk bot side. At this point I have uh, uh, Sterex Gage, Holebreak, and Trinity for Starbies. I'm like, okay, it's, is it just Ezreal here? Sure, I guess it's just anti game then if you ask me to. I don't know what they are smoking, I mean, they basically just let me end here, that's the game. That's the piece, guys. Did we win this game because we team fought? Nope. Did we win this game because we built against their champions nope we won the game because we played greedy as fuck we split pushed we looked for opportunities and that's basically how you have to play whole breaker don't get it twisted even if you don't get a huge opportunity like i did this game which is probably most likely you're not going to get an opportunity like this there is going to be smaller opportunities with whole breaker there's going to be invades where you are solo in a 1v2 because you have whole breaker and trinity force you're just stronger than two champions you get so much resistance this hp movement speed health regen uh 80 i don't know if i already said 80 but we get 80. you're just a fucking ogre if you have to like divine and uh whole breaker trinity force whole breaker stride breaker whole breaker there's barely any champions that can 1v1 1v1 you so i would say the big takeaways from this game is try out hole breaker don't be afraid to just try it out and in some games because it's a play style altering item you build this item you invest your 2.9k gold i think it is or 3k gold i'm not exactly sure right now 
and you're way stronger solo and way weaker if you're with other people and you would have another item so it is something that you have to practice and learn if you watch my matches three on any accounts usually my build always has a hole breaker be it fir uh, i mean first legendary or last legendary you're always going to see me have a hole breaker basically so just try it see what you can do learn to open up bases again and be selfish and not just play for your team, play for yourself, you know. That's basically how I played League since fucking Season 3. I'm just a very selfish jungler and I just take gold for myself and try to do something with the lead. I'm not very good at, like, peeling and helping my team out. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. I hope you enjoyed the hyper analysis. And we will be back next Friday with another video. Bye-bye.